Hey everyone, James Azar here with the podcast. Back on video today on YouTube for you guys. Again, I'm trying to get through this whole traveling thing. We'll hopefully be back in our studio in the next few weeks and be able to continue to deliver the uh, great quality production that you're so used to and loving here at the CyberHub Podcast, your practitioner brief. For Wednesday, July 8th, 2020, we're going to get right into this today. A lot of stuff to um, cover in our practitioner brief, but really important, just a few things. One, you can go to cyberhubpodcast.com. You can sign up, get our practitioner brief directly in your inbox every single day. It's the PDF. It's got all the links. Every single story we talk about in a lot more detail. This podcast is only five minutes, folks. Five minutes. And um, so... We're very limited in the amount of information we can share. Let's get right into our practitioner brief. Again, cyberhubpodcast.com. Sign up to our practitioner brief and get it directly in your inbox each and every single morning. A cybersecurity firm, Sentinel One, has released a free decryptor app that can help victims of the Thief Quest ransomware recover their locked files. Um, the link for the decryptor can be downloaded directly off our PDF. There's also a video demo of how to use the decryptor available on our PDF. So if you know, any, if you know anyone who is a victim of Thief Quest ransomware, which is also identified under the name of Evil Quest, and it targets specifically Mac users, um, Sentinel One has a free decryptor tool out there. Um, also, Malwarebytes does note um, that in a, in, in a published report yesterday that beside encrypting files, ThiefQuest can also infect other local files in a virus-like behavior, so additional cleanup may be necessary. Make sure you check your Macs uh, extensively on that. Cerebrus Banking Trojan is being delivered via an app hosted on Google Play. The malware as a service Cerebrus, which is known for its remote access Trojan capabilities, as well as the functionality through which it logs keystrokes and steals credentials information from Google authenticators and SMS messages. As part of the newly identified attack, the malware was disguised as a currency converter for Android users in Spain and managed to remain undetected by hiding the malicious activity for weeks on end um, after being submitted to Google Play. It racked about 10,000 downloads. Um, it also, um, it's also noted that the command and control server only started issuing commands after a while longer, as in to avoid any um, suspicion from its users. The Trojan steals the user's login credentials, and due to its ability to read text messages and two-factor authentication details, might be also able to bypass MFA in order to compromise banking accounts. This is... Um, really, really important. I know that it's talking about in, in Spain, but I think Spain was the uh, breeding ground for this. We're going to probably see this all over the place. It's probably in the U.S. store and we don't even know it yet. Um, we'll probably see something along those lines in the next few weeks. Again, if your employees, if your colleagues, if your um, family uses a Google Play, just make sure they're verifying the apps they download. Not every app is what it is. And finally, our final story for our practitioner brief today is a Russian cyber gang, Cosmic Links, focuses on email fraud, a complete shift from a typical Russian cyber criminal gang uh, move where they've now moved to business email compromised rather than uh, data theft or anything like that. In fact, it's extremely sophisticated, well-written in English. Um, they're understanding the internal processes of the organization a lot of different things. They're, they've also been able to exploit the DMARC controls to spoof email addresses of impersonated executives within these organizations. They're not requesting a high dollar amount, but staying within a reasonable amount as in to not to raise flags within an organization where an average request is around $55,000. Um, um, unbelievable. Um, it's, it's weird that the Russians are doing this. There's a lot of debate as to why. My personal two cents on this is Russia's been under sanctions. Their economy is extremely suffering. It's been crippled due to COVID-19 as well. And these criminal gangs that operate essentially under the device of the FSB and the Russian government within Russia are being told to go out and get money in order to flow that into the Russian economy as well. That's it for our practitioner brief here today, folks. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for subscribing. Again, cyberhubpodcast.com. Get everything, our CISO Talk podcast um, on our additional channel. 
My name is James Caesar. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll be back with more tomorrow. Until then, folks, really, really important. Stay cyber safe.